Hello, my artsy friends. It's me, Claire, and I'm glad you're here for part three of Steal My Art, the step-by-step -step tutorial on how to forge my painting Lucrezia Claro. This is the third video out of six on the entire lesson of how to forge Lucrezia Claro. It's part of the curriculum at the unaccredited College of Claire. If you need to go back to the first two videos, they're on patreon.com slash Claire Lockhart. Once you finish part three and are ready to move on to part four, head on over to patreon.com slash Claire Lockhart. In part three, you're going to make a lot of accomplishments. You're going to paint the clothes, hair, and add a second layer to the face. Before I move on with my demonstration, I want you to observe the state of my painting on the right and how it differs from my final portrait of Lucrezia Claro. You'll notice that my brush strokes are very apparent. Remember, this first layer is just to cover up those pencil marks and to get some colors down like the lights, the darks, and then fill in the mediums later. Also, my veil is a really different color than the final one, and that's okay. It's because I tend to paint lighter and brighter with my first layers. I have a lot of titanium white mixed in, and that makes paint not only lighter, but a little bit chalkier too. I know I'm going to correct those colors later. And what I think is going to be hilarious is if you are mixing your colors the same way I do, this is just going to be the funniest prank in the long term. So just imagine a few hundred years from now, your forgery is in an art lab and you have these scientists and art experts and curators gathered around and they're trying to figure out how on earth you were able to accurately match the layers of paint that I put on my original painting. They're going to think you're a master forger and it's going to be wild. Okay, so I think the long-term prank is hilarious and I am so excited that you're here to be able to engage with me on this conceptual post-postmodern take on the art world through the traditional medium of oil painting. So the first thing you're going to do is finish covering the surface of your canvas with paint. So you're going to paint the clothes and the hair. First of all, I like to paint in layers because Paint is a physical medium, and so that's why I did the background first, and then the skin. And then you're going to paint the clothes in the order in which you would get dressed in this outfit. So it's the blouse, and then the corset, and then you have the veil and the hair overlapping everything. To paint the clothes, you'll need the following materials. You'll need titanium white, viridian green, cobalt blue, yellow ochre, ultramarine blue, and burnt umber. You of course need your palette and palette knife, plus have rags on hand. Oh, don't wad up your rags in a pile after they're all oily. That is a fire hazard. You need to make sure that you dry them out in a safe place before you dispose of them. Don't leave them in a pile. They could spontaneously combust and that would be terrible. Okay, so you also need your odorless mineral spirits so you can clean your brushes between switching colors. Have your Gelkid Light and a few drops of Gamasol or just some clean odorless mineral spirits if you didn't buy the same brand as me. And you'll mix those together in a small container. You'll also need your Golden Taclon brushes. When you're done painting, you'll need your master's brush cleaner. But while you work, you need to have your photo plus your canvas. Please remember to wear gloves when you are mixing paint and painting today. You are going to be using cobalt blue and I care about your health and safety. So you have to remember to wear those gloves. You should also have your glass scraper nearby so you can keep your palette clean 
and then it's a good idea to have plastic wrap on hand so you can cover up your paint if you need to take a break. You will need a fair amount of black paint today. If you're mixing up your black paint, remember it's a combination of burnt umber and ultramarine blue. Start with the burnt umber and then gradually fold in that blue. You'll need some warm black as well as some cool black. You'll also need to mix up some paint for the veil. And the colors I used include titanium white, viridian green, cobalt blue, yellow ochre, and ultramarine blue. To make my veil colors, I started with titanium white. It's always a good idea to start with the lightest color first and then add the darker colors to it. You can see on my palette, when I am mixing up a color with white, I will move some of my white paint away from that top left corner. And the reason I move it is just in case I don't do a very good job of cleaning off my palette knife, I won't accidentally contaminate a lot of the white paint, just a little bit. So I move some white to the center of my palette and then I added a little bit of Viridian Green, a little Cobalt Blue, and added some Ultramarine Blue. This is going to give you a blue-green color. Then I gradually added the Yellow Ochre to help dull down that color so I have a less intense version of a light blue-green color. I do recommend that you should make a light and a dark blue-green. So you can see I have a light blue-green. It's white plus viridian green, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, and the yellow ochre. And then I have a darker version where there's no white at all. So I just mixed viridian green, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, and some of that yellow ochre. I know I've said it before, but paint is a physical medium, and it's important to paint the top layers last. For this composition, I painted the black chemise first since it's the lowest layer of clothing. I made a warm black by combining burnt umber with ultramarine blue. I used cool black, which is the same mixture, but with more blue for the shadows. After I finished the shirt, I painted the corset. The local color of the clothing is black, which means that overall the outfit is black, but the color varies depending on the highlights and shadows. I painted the dark shadows first with my cool black to make them very dark. Cool colors recede and warm colors come forward. Plus, cool colors are great for creating shadows. I try to paint with as large of brushes as possible to help save time and to help me avoid getting caught up in tiny details that don't matter in the first layer. I use golden Taclon brushes when I paint with oils because they're easy to clean and they help me get a smooth layer at the end. When you're ready to start painting the clothes, keep in mind you need to use the medium sparingly. The medium does help your paint dry faster, but it also makes it more see-through. Right now, your focus is to cover up all those pencil marks. So when you are using your Gelkid Light, just dip your clean paintbrush into the medium and then combine it with just a small amount of paint. Don't stir it in with all the paint, just mix it together with the paint that you're going to immediately put on your canvas. When you're doing the clothing, start with the lowest layers first. That's why I did the shirt first and then I built the corset next. And your goal is to paint general to specific throughout this entire project. This layer is a very general layer your brush strokes are going to be chunky, so don't blend the paint. I also want to note that I tend to make my blacks pretty gray in my first layer, 
so I have white with a bit of that warm black mixed in for the highlights. And then my shadows are the cool black. To paint the veil, I mixed Viridian Green, Cobalt Blue, Yellow Ochre, and Ultramarine Blue. You'll see that I'm wearing gloves, and this is because I'm working with Cobalt Blue. I need you to be safe when you paint, so remember your gloves and make sure you have good ventilation. After I mixed up a dark blue-green color, I then squeezed out a little white and added a tiny amount of my blue-green to make a light blue-green for the highlights. I kept some of the solid color for the dark teal without any white, but I also mixed up a medium tint of blue-green. I painted the shadows in the folds of the fabric of the veil first because they were easiest for me to see. I painted the highlights next, and then I filled in the gaps with the medium blue-green paint. It's okay if the colors aren't a perfect match on the first layer. You really just want to cover up your graphite drawing. Now, colors are affected by adjacent hues, and the colors will look different once you move them from your palette to your canvas. For me, my priority is to get highlights and shadows over perfect color matches. It will get a lot easier to match the colors once there is a complete layer of paint on the entire surface of the canvas. I'm sure you've noticed how much I move my head when I paint, and that's because I am constantly checking my reference image. If your goal is to make a realistic painting, you have to spend a lot of time observing your subject so you can paint what you see, not what you think you see. Because the hair overlaps the veil in some spots, and the veil overlaps the hair too, I chose to paint those areas simultaneously. To paint hair, it's necessary to avoid painting in the strands of hair like long pieces of spaghetti. That makes the hair look stringy and unrealistic. The secret to rendering realistic hair is to just focus on the shadows and highlights. The hair is a very dark brown, and I began by blocking in the darkest shadows with black paint first. Then, I started to fill in the hair with burnt umber. I used yellow ochre for some of the shiny reflective spots. I also used titanium white for some of the highlights. It's crucial to avoid blending the hair with your paintbrush. Leave the brush strokes to help build the texture. I want to mention again that when I paint, I do spend a lot of time looking at my reference. I also want to remind you to step back from your canvas throughout this process to compare your painting with your reference image. I keep painting until the entire surface of my canvas is completely covered with a layer of paint. Remember that the composition will look chunky at this point, but all these layers will eventually be refined. After I finished the main part of the outfit, I was able to move on to the hair and the veil. When you paint with oils, you should paint the overlapping areas last, and since the hair sometimes overlaps the veil and the veil overlaps the hair, I worked on those parts pretty much simultaneously. Your goal right now is to cover the entire canvas with one layer of paint, and once you get there, it will feel like quite an achievement. Focus on the shadows and highlights. So with the veil, for example, I put the shadows in first with that dark blue-green because I could see them easily and this helped me get started. I then put in the highlights and filled in all of the in-between spots with a medium blue-green color. For the hair, I also focused on the shadows and highlights. When you paint hair, don't paint full strands of hair going from root to tip. You're going to 
put in those shadows first. I painted them black because the hair is very dark. I filled in most of the hair with burnt umber and then I used yellow ochre and titanium white for the highlights. This portrait will require many layers of paint to complete it. After you have finished covering the surface of your canvas 100%, you'll be able to move on to the second layer for the face. I believe there's no such thing as a bad painting, just incomplete paintings. And allow me to demonstrate that point with these two photos of different states of progress on my portrait of Lucrezia Claro. On the left, I only have one layer of paint on the whole surface. On the right, you'll notice that the face looks a little bit more realistic. It looks a little bit more complete. And that's because I added the second layer of paint. This second layer of paint hides a lot of that scratchiness from the first layer. I have completely concealed my pencil marks. And you'll notice my colors are becoming a little bit more accurate as well. For my second layer on the face, I didn't even bother to touch the eyes or the mouth. I just wanted to focus on the skin, and I'll show you exactly what I did. To paint the face, you'll need the following materials. You need your palette and palette knife. Have your rags ready. You need your odorless mineral spirits. Please have your Gelkid Light, Gamasol, and the container. Of course, you need some brushes, your reference photo and canvas, have your brush cleaner ready so you'll be able to clean up when you're done and it's a good idea to have that plastic wrap so you can preserve your paint for later. If you're mixing up new skin tones today, let me remind you of that recipe. Start with titanium white and zinc white and then you're going to mix up separately the cadmium red, yellow ochre, and cadmium yellow to create that orange. Add a little bit of it to your titanium white and zinc white to create your lightest skin tones. If you're making a medium skin tone, combine all that with a little bit of burnt umber and burnt sienna. For the darkest skin tone, omit the white. So it's just cadmium red, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, plus the burnt umber and a little burnt sienna. On my palette, I have a little bit of alizarin crimson in case I need to work on the tear ducts or mix any in with the skin tone. And then I have ultramarine blue because adding blue to the skin tone desaturates it. It makes it darker and duller, which is perfect for shadows. It's difficult to paint a face and it will require the most layers of paint. For this second layer, I'm going to skip painting the eyes and mouth this time. My goal for this layer is to make sure that my pencil marks are completely covered. It's easiest for me to paint the shadows by combining a little ultramarine blue into my dark skin color, which is made up of yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, burnt umber, and burnt sienna. Don't mix white into your shadows because it will make them look chalky and gray. This second layer of paint will still look blocky and rough, but you'll notice an improvement if you remember to apply the paint so it goes along with the structure of the face and neck. Even though many of the shadows on the neck appear vertical, paint in a side-to-side -side motion to make the neck look cylindrical. I want to share that it took me about an hour to paint the clothes, hair, veil, and this second layer of skin. You might spend less time on these steps than I did, or it might take you longer. Just work at your own pace. This is hard work, and getting to this point is an accomplishment. To summarize what I just demonstrated, you are going to add a second layer of paint to the face and neck. You don't need to worry about the eyes or mouth or anything else. Just focus on covering up that first layer of paint wherever you see skin. You should have your light, medium, and dark skin tones on your palette ready to go. You can use ultramarine blue to desaturate your skin tones, which is perfect for your shadows. 
and it's okay to exaggerate the shadows. You'll notice in the early states of my painting, I really amp up that contrast, but I work on it and bring it back to a more realistic level later on. The main thing you really want to think about is covering up that first layer of paint on the face and the neck. You are making sure that there are no pencil marks showing through and you're going to be able to be more specific with your color choices. As you're painting though, you don't need to blend too much, but you do want to pay attention to the contours, the face, and the directions of your brush strokes. So on the forehead, for example, you'll paint side to side, and on the neck, you're going to follow that cylindrical shape to make it look three-dimensional. Don't paint up and down. And when you paint the cheeks and the chin, you're just going to follow the curves and the directions of the face. I also want to reassure you that it's okay if your painting looks weird right now. I think my paintings look very strange in the first few layers. And if you are thinking that about your own work, you are following my directions very carefully. <laughs> After you're all done painting the face, you'll need to clean up. Please remember to wash out your brushes really well. You still have a few more painting sessions to go. And if you have a lot of paint left over, you can cover it with plastic wrap to save it for next time. Once you get to this point, you are halfway done with your forgery. Keep going. You've got to keep up this good work. You are on part three out of six parts. You do have a few more sessions to complete this portrait, but you're halfway there. Once you are done with part three and ready to move on to part four, go to patreon.com slash Claire Lockhart, and that's where you'll find part four out of the six part lesson, which is part of the curriculum at the unaccredited College of Claire. Once again, you are halfway done with your forgery and I am really excited for you.